Hey applicant, I'm the interviewer and in this role you're expected to be proficient in Excel so we're going to test that through an Excel interview test that's going to be five questions long from easy to hard. Sounds good? Yes, ready to get started and if you also want to practice check out the free link in the description below to download the exact same Excel file. So over here we have the first question which is actually the easiest one. Let's take a look. It says to create a condition to highlight revenue above 50,000 in green and below and including 50,000 in red. So here's the revenue column over here. And first we'll just select all of the numbers. And what we wanna do is create a condition using conditional formatting. That's probably the easiest method. So on the green side, it's going to be when greater than 50,000, it's in green. So we'll just type the 50,000 in here as the threshold and change the color to a green and hit on OK. So that's 50% done and the R side says below and including 50,000 in red. So we'll go back to conditional formatting, highlight cell rules, but this time you can see that we don't have a less than or equal to, we just have less than. So we could put two conditions, one less than and one equal to or simply customize it ourselves with more rules. So we're gonna say that if the cell value is less than or equal to 50,000, let's put that in here, then we're going to change the formatting to something like adding a fill color, which let's say is in red, like this red over here. And we can also change the font color down over here. Let's suppose I go for this orangish color so we can see it a bit and click on okay and okay again. Now you can see what that looks like and it's including that 50,000 as well. Awesome, that's level one done. So let's move on to the next level with question two. And over here it says, employees with revenue over 50,000 should receive a bonus of 5% of revenue. So you can see here the employee, the revenue they're getting, and for the bonus, we have that 5% to the side. Now calculate the bonus amount in the yellow area. So this part over here, if it's not over 50,000, then leave blank. Now, this is some kind of a conditional statement, so it probably makes sense to use an if statement. So under the first name, we're just gonna put equals, if, hit the top key there. The logical test is that if this revenue figure over here is greater than 50,000, if that's the case, what do we wanna do? So we'll put a comma and the value if true. If it is the case, we want to reference that same D7, which is the revenue, and multiply that by the bonus amount, which is 5%. We'll hit the comma there, and then the value if false, meaning if it's not above 50,000, well, we wanna leave blank as it said up over here. And we do that by adding two quotations, close the parenthesis and hit enter. That's the first one done, and you might think of just dragging it down, but actually we have a problem that's it, it doesn't quite work. This is because we're actually moving down these cell references, but we should have actually locked them with the dollar keys. So if we go back to the top one, first you'll notice that we have the G7, which is this one right here. We should lock that under the row with the dollar sign. This is going to prevent it from going down. Same thing with the bonus. So under G10, we'll put a dollar sign on the tender so it doesn't move down. Now we can hit enter and double click on the side to drag this down and you can see when they're above that 50,000 mark they're starting to get a bonus which should be 5% of their revenue. Great, now moving to level 3 which is slightly harder. Over here the question says to separate the department and region column. So this column over here into two separate columns in the yellow area. So one for department and another one for the region. For this, there's probably a few different ways to go about it. So let me show you one of them, which is one of Excel's new formulas called the text split. Hit the top key there. And what it does is it's basically going to split text into two, right? So this is the text we wanna split, comma. And for the column delimiter, we want to add in quotations, the underscore. That's how we wanna decide to split these two columns. Close the quotations and close the parenthesis and hit enter. Now we have that first one done and we simply need to drag this down all the way to the bottom there and you can see what that's looking like. Now if you don't have the text split formula there is also another method. 
First, let me delete this part over here. And instead, what we're gonna do is select the relevant area. So these over here, go over to data and click on text to columns. This is basically going to do the same thing. We want it delimited next. And here as what's our separator, we wanna go to other and select an underscore. That's what we'll type there. You can see in the preview that it's now splitting things correctly. Hit on next. And for the destination, we're gonna wanna switch this to this part right here and click on finish. Now you can see what that's looking like where we have the department in one side and the region in the other. If you're finding this a bit too fast or slightly too challenging, we'd recommend you check out our Excel for business and finance course. With our comprehensive curriculum, we cover everything you need to know from formatting best practices and shortcuts to building awesome visual dashboards, creating large dynamic financial models, and much more. This is basically the course I wish I had before I started to work at an Excel heavy corporate job. If all of this sounds interesting, check out the link in the description below. And if you want more than just Excel, we also offer courses including Power BI, Finance and Valuation, and much more. All right, back to the interview. Awesome, now moving on to the hard stuff in level four, let's take a look at the question. So it says to use a pivot table to find total revenue by product and average profit by product. So over here is the table that we basically just wanna put inside of a pivot table. So we'll go to insert and click on pivot table. We should get the whole area selected by default, but let me put it in an existing worksheet over here just to the side so we can see it better. Gonna click on okay there. And so here's our pivot table. Let me resize that. Awesome. So first we wanna find the total revenue by product. And for this, we're gonna select the products and put them under the rows so we can see all of them to the side. And then we wanna get the revenue as our values. So we'll just drag and drop that. You can see our sum of revenue there by product. So that's all looking good for the first part. And secondly, we have the average profit by product. So for this, it's the same thing. We'll drag and drop the profit. But you'll notice though that it's still the sum of the profit. It's not the average. So that's not quite right. We actually need to go to this drop down over here. And under value field settings, we're gonna change this from the sum to the average. That should do it for us and click on OK. If you really wanted to, you could customize this, maybe change the formatting of the numbers so you can read them better with some commas or change the titles over here so they are exactly the same as the question. Now, if you found this question quite easy, wait till we get to the bonus question at the end of the video. But for the time being, let's go over level five and the question they have there. It says over here to use two different formulas to find Sarah's revenue. And over here in yellow, we have the area for one formula and down below the area for the second formula. So basically we wanna find Sarah and then get the revenue for her. Now there's probably multiple formulas we could use here, but an easy one that comes to mind is the X lookup. So we'll go equals X lookup, hit the tab key there and the lookup value. Well, we're looking for Sarah, right? So let's select her comma, where can we find her? That's the lookup array. Well, we can find her in the list of names over here, comma. And then the return array is what do we want as the answer? Well, we wanna find Sarah's revenue. So we'll just select the whole revenue area over here, close the parenthesis and hit enter. Now it says 48,000. If we check in the table, you can see that looks about right. Great. That's the first formula done. And now let's go over formula number two. And for this, I'm thinking we could use a VLOOKUP, which is very similar, or let's try something different with an index match. So equals index, hit the tab key there. And the array is basically the result that we want. In our case, we're looking for the revenue figures, comma. Then under row number, we'll put the match formula hit the tab key there and the lookup value. Well, we're looking for Sarah, much like before, comma, and we're looking for Sarah within this range over here, comma. 
And as the match type, we want an exact match. We'll close the parenthesis for the match there. And now we need to close it again for the index part. So we'll do that and hit enter. So it says 48,000, meaning it's probably correct too. Hey, welcome back. Congrats, you solved all of these questions. So you've definitely passed this Excel interview test. That said, here's one bonus question you probably won't know. So let's take a look at this mysterious bonus question. Over here, it says to remove the parenthesis and everything inside of it for each client. So if we take a look at the client column over here, you can see that they have these parentheses and within it, they have some text. So it's saying to remove everything in there as well as the parentheses. Now, what makes this a bit tricky is that they're not all the same character length. You can see some over here seem to be shorter while others seem to be somewhat longer. Now to change this, what I'm thinking is first selecting everything and then clicking on Control H. That's the same thing as going to find and select and clicking on replace. Now we should get this pop up. And from here, we want to find what exactly? Well, we want to find things in parentheses. Now, how do we say exactly what we want in the parentheses? Because they're all of different lengths here, right? That makes it a bit tricky and they're obviously not the same text. So what we'll put is an asterisk sign inside of it that basically says to remove everything that's inside of the parentheses. Now, what do we want to replace it with? Nothing, right? So we'll just put on replace all and then hit on OK and close out of that. You can see that now that's looking all clean. So there's a cool trick for you. Let me know down in the comments if you got that bonus question. Now to continue learning Excel, check out their latest features over here or take our Excel course over here. Hit that like and that subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.